Hey, yeah, I'm going to start the meeting. What? It's already been... Hey, hey, smart. What goes on? Ah, come on, I tell you, just get the ball out of here, baby. Well, I can see the elevator tap or one of the things you want to do. Come away, you move. Okay, come on, well, I will see you like once a lot of my beginning. I could have a kid. Eh, okay. Okay, I'm not trying to get out to second to her. Ka Facebook live. Okay, one is. Eh, give me a garage in a moon. Oh, all right, one is. Okay, one I said it's one of them. All right, Thomas. Ready, General Tyler, take down to say, Thank you, Hispa. Thank you, Spot. Thank you, one is. Thank you, one of them. Ah, spy. Spy in general. Spy in general, I see. Ah, spy. Spy in general, you can see. In your own tower, I'm a man in Oh, I want to get into the last minute. You can't get this thing. Okay, this thing. I sometimes in uno we said as a was Okay.
Good day, leaders. Hey, Mr. Mtamai. Ah, oh, Mr. Mtamai, so bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, you're a KEP. I get you an AK, he host host, meaning a co host, Moba. Oh, when's the girl who sent the lane on it? Oh, so right, he's know. traveling. So, um, <clears throat> um, there's a mark credential of waiting on we this week, Gala E session whilst we're okay. waiting. Yeah. So long, eh? yes. yes. So, more or less, see, no more well. I think it's as well. Oh, uh, she, she's online. Uh, maybe, yeah, she's I think still she's still preparing. Yeah. Yeah, no, no problem. I think she's still preparing, Dava. Mandiva, Mulu, my God, Lemon. Save, I guess. Molo, ma'am. Eh, well, eh? Jan, you are killing him, Johnny Apple. I speak in a cord. Eh, I a cord. Eh, did I welcome Utetanus Bussi, so as Tebe. Uh, yeah. The executive director, CEO, yes, I'll Jack. Wow, that's awesome. Uh, I'll be, I'll be hosting you. You are welcome, and it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an honor and a pleasure to have you here. Uh, I'm, also, I'm also feeling it very privileged to, to be part of the opening little man in the invite. As a matter of the voice, and I'm, I'm raising gentlemen of tomorrow. Nice. Yes, yes. No, it it it. Well, and just bapeng over staying on phone. Just bapeng a little few minutes. But log in. Bang in. I'm a guest to it. Yes, in the bullets. Hi guys. Good evening. Good afternoon, uh, Miss Ndlovu. How are you? How are you? I can't How see anyone ever... on the screen. Yes, it's because uh, we are hiding. Lida, we are here. We are hiding. You want to see hiding. faces? <laughs> I'm yeah. feeling lonely. <laughs> No, we are you want to see faces? Say hi. <laughs> <laughs> I feel better when I can see faces. Eh? Okay. <laughs> we, we are here. We are here. <laughs> nice to see you guys. Been a while, eh? Yeah. yeah uh, hey. No, no. And it's a great day. It's the rainy weekend. Yeah. Blessings. I... No, true. Yes. No, I'm happy when I see um when I'm able to see faces. I feel very happy. <laughs> yeah. I don't feel alone. You know when you're in this thing and the screen is blank, so you're talking to yourself, man. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so and you think you're no, that's good. Voice yeah, me no, you're talking alone. No, hi, no more no more well, eh? no more well. How are you, sis? Yeah, I'm sorry, sis. I'm sorry. Yeah, P that's this. I saw your um your thing on the on the uh, subject website. I'm so proud of you, yes. I really am. Yeah, but no, let's see. You're such a strong and brave woman. Well done. I really admire your tenacity. Hey, it comes with a heavy price. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm so sorry for everything you went through, but I could pick up from, you know, just reading that, you know, this woman's been through a lot, but, you know, you're able to turn around a situation that's bad into good, and I really admire that about you. Yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah, we need to turn our wounds you know, into yeah. wisdom. Yeah, no, thank you for so much for that. I must invite you, but I must speak to Oprah Bo, my saying Genin. I must invite you to speak to the women in Africa. We are doing some similar work. Um, sorry, I'm hijacking the platform on, uh, on issues related to women, uh, yes. women abuse, uh, peace and security under the banner of the AU um, social and security cluster, economic, social and security cluster. So I we don't want to women that have that strength uh, like you do. Uh, you know, I like to invite them because, you know, when you speak from experience and you speak something as sensitive as that, you bring healing even to the other women on the other side. You know, they yes. don't, feel, don't feel condemned or feel yes. alone that, you know, they're experiencing this pain on their own. You know, they feel that they, can, they have someone they can relate to. They feel at ease. You know, they, it helps, it's, a, it's, a, it's a healing um, it's a healing and a therapeutic thing. So, you know, I was like, and I need to listen to you today because I honestly think I need to invite you to come and speak to the African women. I'm doing a lot of work on the ground with the African women. Yeah, I'll be very honored. This is It's my heart to to to, to be able to revive those voices you know, that are still feeling lonely, that are silenced, you know. Yeah, yeah, so true. They can get their voice. 
Yeah, no, true. No, I, 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 I just, I was grabbed by, I was reading, I'm like, no, there's something about this lady, you know? I read your autobiography, and I'm, I mean, your your bio, and I'm like, no, there's something about you, and I'm like, I'm sure today it's going to be a, a, a power packed, um, you know, talk, and you know, talking from the heart as well. So I thought, mm. no, you must come. I'm doing some, the work I do, I don't enjoy it, I won't lie to you, I enjoy it because it's a passion, but it's it can be very depressing because you know it's yeah. you're dealing with you know people are dealing with there are people that are going through war yes. and uh, I mean sometimes these guys are standing pictures of dead faces in the middle of the war of the of the night yeah. and you know you have to come you know have have meetings discuss and see how you can interview the governments there and stuff it's not a nice job but it's not I mean don't, I'm not doing it as a job anyway it's humanitarian work but it's yes. something that's oh. very meaningful very oh. impactful. Uh, it's not your typical nice, you know, glory, whatever kind of work. It's like, like last week I was depressed. The other uh, week I was depressed with the Nigerian situation. I didn't sleep at night. We're having um, nights and talks at night with the Nigerian youth that were directly involved in that whole protest. Can you imagine? We had to yeah. actually, um, I had to speak to them to come to try and calm them down from taking up arms and fighting yeah. the state because they were going to die because the state is more equipped um, in terms mm. of, ma- uh, of the machinery than they are. I spent right. four hours at night until late hours of the night uh, without sleeping, trying to calm down the Nigerian Youth League. And then the following day, I had a meeting in the morning with the people from Cameroon because they just shot some some small, some, some young um, ch- school children in Cameroon. And I yeah. was depressed the whole two weeks. I was literally yeah. depressed. I'm like, this thing is draining me emotionally. It's like, it's not just a typical work in jail. It's really... It's, it was it really drained me. I was depressed. I'm like, you know, guys, I need to just shut off. And I don't want to talk. I don't want to do meetings. I don't want to do nothing. I just want to shut off and just, you know, uh, absorb myself because I think it was very, it was too much for me. I mean, I couldn't take it emotionally. Yeah. I couldn't take it. You know, I couldn't take it at all. So, yeah, you know, when I, met, when I saw your bio, I'm like, you know, this lady, you know, she's the typical person that must talk on those platforms because you talk real stuff. You know, you're going to talk, you know, experience and talk, you know, overcoming and all that. And those people are experiencing rape wars. They're experiencing, I mean, I get Nigerian women phone me every single day. I went, I spoke once on a Nigerian yeah. lady presenter who invited me last week platform. And ever since that interview, it was on YouTube. It's on YouTube interview in my clip. I haven't been sleeping. They're phoning me. They want me to go and talk in their country. I'm like, guys. You know, hang ten over there. But I understand they are blight. I mean, it's like you know they're going through serious. If you think here in the country we're going through stuff, I'm not saying I'm not despairing whatever we go through. But yes, as Africa is going through worse horrors. It's you know? bad. So yeah, I had to like, bad. I had to actually like say, guys, I'm emotionally, I can't take it emotionally. It's too much for me. Can I just switch off and allow myself to recoup? <laughs> recoup and just you know, cause it's, I promise you, it's too much for me. I mean, they send me. Pictures of dead bodies at night, like about two in the morning. I'm getting a WhatsApp and I'm looking. It's a it's a face of a dead body, and I'm like, guys, come on, it's too much for me. You know, I have to say, guys, please stop sending me the gruesome pictures. I can I can see on TV, I can see on Twitter, everything else, but don't send it to my phone because it becomes too much for me. Emotionally, it's too much. I, I can't I can't handle it. I mean, it's like I feel like a wounded soldier myself. So yeah. Yes, um, Olympics, I'll, friends, I'll, just uh, shall for, I, uh, I'll just ask for two minutes. Um, yeah. yeah, so sorry, guys. I just had to, uh, I was just finishing time there. <laughs> Not to hijack the platform, but yeah, yeah I wish you all the best. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry, guys. Sorry, uh, yeah. my deepest apologies for hijacking yeah. the platform. my leader. Uh, no, so that you don't, you know, you, you, you don't cut yourself while you're still wrapping up. I'm giving you just two minutes. I'm setting up something and we'll just kick in now. Just, okay, uh, no problem. just yeah. a, a, a reminder as well, we're already live on uh, Facebook, so let's uh, oh. be cautious of that as well. Okay. Oh, okay. I wanted to set that leader because uh, someone was saying we're not live on Facebook. I wanted to oh, check that, double check that. Yes. But, uh, at that time, I was just setting the up, uh, sir. Okay. No, we, 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 can, we can begin. Okay, okay. that's fine. Then. I'm going to, I'm going to also go and check out the, uh, I'm going to do a, um, what do you call it? I'm going to do a watch party on my, from my Facebook live. Nice. No, nice, nice. Um, 
Good, 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 good afternoon, leaders. Good afternoon. Um, welcome to another yet uh, fruitful and very informative session. Welcome to SALJEC. My name is Sibusiso Sitebe. I'm the chief executive of the organization. Um, before we can even begin, I would like to apologize. Normally, we, we are hosted by our chairman, Mr. Bo Tlabakwe. Uh, he's currently um, um, away. He's, he's off sick, and we pray for his speedy recovery. He wanted to be with us here, and he said uh, if he manages, he will try and log on. But he's very, very uh, uh, um, uh, not well. So I'll be your host today, and we we will have a we'll have a, a very engaging uh, a session. Uh, as you all know, I I I I I believe that you all know that uh, SALJEC is South African Leadership Gentlemen's Club. It was formed in 2019, and we are young men and old men that are trying to liberate. Uh, uh, both male species, uh, young and old, mentally, you know, to be liberated mentally and economically. Um, a mental liberation of South African men through various programs in partnership with all stakeholders, transforming from good to great. We are all about total respect of self, women, children, vulnerable, and our slogan, is reviving human conscience and giving back hope. We also saying we are there to rebuild general relationship with our resources, such as land, community, and money. Creating economic opportunities among local communities and establishing a sustainable economic beneficiation from our local wealth ensuring that our communities and youth in particular are available for industrial uh, revolution opportunities and challenges. Uh, in, 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 in simplicity, as the men and young men, we have stood up and we have seen the, the so much inequalities that are there. We, we have noticed and seen the absence of men in all our activities of our lives, environment, our politics, economic structures, and the challenges that our women and children, our sisters and mothers are going through. And we said as Saljek, we as men need to stand up and be counted. We can no longer stand aside and watch women run on the forefront alone, being prosecuted, persecuted, castrated, abused and attacked, human trafficking, and all such uh, Ill, 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 Ill behavior that they experience in our country and worldwide. Saljek is there and says to women, we are with you. We respect you. We love you. We are also there to say to our brothers, we are with you, and we are there to comfort, to guide you, to rehabilitate you, to also correct you and show you the path and strengthen you wherever and however you need help. Saljek is your home. We are not alone as Saljek. We have friends of Saljek. We have men and women who have partnered with us and said, we are with you, a, 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 a leadership. We are with you in this mission. We subscribe to your vision. We also have women who are constantly engaging with us, supporting us, and, and today's session is also possible because of such incredible, phenomenal, and powerful, mighty women that are behind the leadership of Saljek and the men of Saljek. Uh, today, Saljek is hosting a leadership discussion uh, on gender-based violence with our esteemed guest, um, very esteemed guest, Nomawele Njongo. Uh, Nomawele Njongo is a South African writer, a publisher, 
born in a rural town of Lusikisiki, Eastern Cape. Uh, many who are from Eastern Cape uh, would, would, would know about Lusikisiki. And those who are from, in South Africa who have never been there, as we also introduce you to such esteemed guests and where they are from as South Yes, I'm back. Yeah, we can hear you, sir. Okay, yes. Um, our, our esteemed guest, Nomawele Njongo, is a South African writer, a publisher, born in a small town, rural town of Lusikisiki in the Eastern Cape. She is a gender-based and sclerosis survivor. Her story begins uh, in Parliament, the precinct of Parliament, where she became a victim of gender-based violence as a 21-year-old woman in her hands of then political wig, big wig, according to Maya Angelou. Each time a woman stands up for herself, each time a woman stands up for herself without knowing possibly, without claiming it, she stands up for all women and her activism was birthed. In advocating for GBV throughout written work, she wrote a true account, which a story of many girls, women in society who are subjected to abuse by those who are in power. Her book is called Abortion by Womb of Democracy. First edition was published in 2019 and was published by her publishing enterprise called Quazitina. She also wrote a second edition which will be released late, which will be released late this month. It is a joint, it is joined by a growing list of titles from different authors and which are was within by Tina Njongo, Memoirs of 18 by Gwazi Njongo, and Amasha, Amasha Ndenyuka, um, Obon, by Zizipo Happiness Zide. Um, apology, this was not pronounced properly. All published in 2020 and will be released before end of October. She is a mother to two sons aged in 15 and 13 years. And as a mother, she is successfully managed to motivate and influence her sons in reading and writing. Hence, they are also authors. This this is, is great leaders. This is exciting. And this is so profound to, to be in the presence of such esteemed guest as uh, Umama Unomawele Njongo. And as you seen that her leadership and her success was not only for her, but she has spread it and shared it with us. Her survival, her story, her journey, she has all, she also shared it with us to motivate and to inspire other women out there. And it also touches on us as men. It also touches us as men who are in powerful 
position or in leadership structures. And what also is displayed in her character, in her journey, uh, seeing as a, a mother of two, she has also transferred the skill. She has also transferred the, the intellect and the strength to her children. And by that, she is a phenomenal woman. She is leadership and we are honored to, to be in her presence and for her to grace us with her presence. Now, leaders, I would, without further ado, take more time from her. Uh, I would like to hand over to, to Umama Nomawele Nonjongo so that she can share with us uh, her journey, her, her understanding, and inform us, educate us more about gender-based violence. We, 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 we can't introduce you to this. We can't um, lecture you on this. It is on TV every day. It is on newspapers, on social media. If not in our country, in other countries, we are all aware of the gender-based violence that is escalating and, 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 and is becoming a, 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 as big as a pandemic. And as men of Saljek, and the women, I speak also for the women of Friends of Saljek that are supporting us. We, we condemn any behavior, any act, any prejudice that sets to promote gender-based violence, economically, psychologically, and, and in any other form. Leaders, ladies and gents, um, I would like to hand over now to Mama, my leader, welcome, welcome to Saljek. The, the platform is yours and, and, and I would like to very much apologize for our chair not being around. He, 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 is, he is held by all health reasons. Um, the platform is yours, our guests are yours, our members are yours. Please share with us your profound intellect and historical journey. Good afternoon to everyone. Thank, thanks, Musiso. Thanks to Sajid to invite me in this great platform. I'm so privileged to be invited by an organization such as yours. As a matter of two, the gentlemen of tomorrow that I'm raising, I consider myself very privileged to speak to you today. This is a great platform, I must say, for our beautiful country to restore hope and morality as we are that we are now becoming, becoming a, a morality country, you know. Mm -hmm. So according to Martin Luther King Jr., our, our lives begins to end the day we become silent about the things that matter. So I'm so excited that we're having this discussion because the moment we, we, we keep quiet about these issues, we are also adding them, you know. So thanks a lot. Nonetheless, Today, our today's topic is the gender-based violence. We are having a paradigm shift where issues of gender-based violence are no longer women's issues. Actually, they were never a women's issues. They were, they, were, uh, they were issues of us all, but we just confused the issues. However, we all know the moment you mention the gender-based violence, everybody assumes it's a female-related issue, hence men, they make an excuse of not taking the issue serious because it has been associated with another gender. Yet the gender concept is not speaking to, to, to females. The gender refers to men and women. So now I'm, 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 I'm so happy that now your, your organization is, is, is setting a, a record you know, that uh, people, other, other, other men, they must try to organize themselves so that uh, there are many platforms such as this, you know. So, so hello? Okay. So that uh, we, we, we can, if we can join hands between men and, 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 uh, and uh, female, we can be able to be a violent, free society. A women alone can never do this, these things, can never win the gender, gender fight alone. Uh, uh, gender-based violence is 
it's nothing else but it is defined as a as a as a violence against men and women but based on their gender identity it is experienced by both men and women all over the world and across all races however it must be notable that the majority of victims are always women and girls it is very significant to note that uh, the majority of gender-based violence is predominantly caused by the inequalities between men and, and uh, men and women men and women as a result men often use their supremacy or their privileges to uh, they, they often use their their supremacy or their privileges against the vulnerable women according to the united nations population fund one in three women are abused sexually and physically one of the major contributing factors of gender-based violence is how we are socialized between men and women men are social men are socialized to be aggressive men are socialized to not show emotions men are socialized to not show their emotions because they'll be seen as weak if they do while women are socialized to be polite to be gently and to be only domestical to, to, to be to be adapted in domestic chores they are socialized to be ready for marriages instead of ready to, to, to be nurtured for to take greater responsibilities like men so when i look at this whole thing it's, it's it starts from our home the gender-based violence is nurtured by patriarchy system or toxic toxic masculinity and and culture uh, religion are uh, nurturing are contributing are nurturing this thing because many women and, uh, and men they believe other occurrences that are natural ordered yet they are not ordered it's just that they would be, they've been normal, normal, normalized and nobody has challenged them so everyone now think it is correct because nobody say anything about them they've been done by our forefathers like for many generations but just because they kept quiet about issues it does not mean they were correct or they are correct but the socialization is, it is playing a major a major challenge in this uh in the gender-based violence is it it's a it's it's, it's it's contributing it starts from a household level to a public domain places and from a private places to public institutions it starts from there in our homes to the up to the higher offices of society to the to the churches we need to fight these battles in our homes first because the uh, uh, families are a basic unit of our society if we, if our families are are, are, are toxic are, have a lot of toxicity or are broken of course as the society will be broken because who bring who give back to the society is the families so this thing of gender based violence I, I, from my own experiences i no longer look at it that, uh, like as a, as a, as a, as a survivor that okay what happened to me was it because i am normal well i look at the bigger picture that no it's happened because i'm a woman right? and one now i try to check to go back what really is going on but when i look at it we never fight we never conquer it we never take it if we're gonna start like dealing like uh, uh patriarch we're talking about e equality uh, uh, in the workplaces we need to start there in our homes homes that's where the issue is we've got broken societies as a result of homes if homes are not united if households if especially african homes they are too broken so we need to do something with the homes then also grooms i like what you're doing to grooms boys at an earlier age so that they don't inherit the toxicity when you're dealing with this gender-based violence there are many factors of gender-based violence that cause gender-based violence hmm? There are many things except the one that happens in our homes or like in the in the workplaces there have been always this a, a, a street harassment that many women are going through 
whereby when you're going in the streets, you, you get an unnecessary attention. You find boys or men calling you when you refused. They will start uh, insulting you. They will whisper. They will, they will, they will blow whis they will, they will, they will whistle and give you unnecessary attention. When you refuse, when you don't want to talk, they, they will force you to, and tell you who the hell do you think you are. Or umobi. Or guy. Or about the back is about to receive fed. We don't want to call these names, but they are being called in the streets. You know? Those things, every woman has suffered that. That is another sign. Those are the things that are contributing in this gender phase because they start illegal. And if they are not stopped, they are continuing, they are developing in another thing because it's a culture. Sadly, the boys that are growing and they are seeing those things happening, they think it's a norm. They are think it's a way of living. They think it's okay to insult a woman because nobody ever told them this is wrong. So those things are contributing too much. If you remember the incident, I think, I don't know if it was 2008. I think it was 2008. The issue of Nolu Babalo in Uganda, they ignored taxi rank where she was assaulted by the taxi drivers and the hookers. hookers. It's, and apparently it, she was not the first woman to go through that that day. Just because these things are not publicized, they are still happening. And many women are going through it every day. What is the problem? The problem, the society is quiet. Nobody is saying this is wrong. So, uh, so it's adding. According to Albert Einstein, the world is a dangerous place, not because of those who do evil, but because of those who sit and do nothing, who watch and do nothing. Another part of, uh, another part of, um, harassment that is contributing to gender-based violence is the thing that usually it's been happening for some time in our, in our look, in our class, as Lali, everywhere. Fortunately, as well, I have lived everywhere. I've lived in rural, I've lived in class, I've lived in South, I've lived everywhere. So I know what I'm talking about. Where you'll find a boy, a boy child, you know, when you see a new girl in town, or a new girl in town, see a new girl is lolling, then they will go to his peers and say, gents, did you see that girl? There's a new chick here. Who's going to bed her first? Who's going to eat her? It's, that's the last they use. They violated the girl. They've already violated the girl before the actual violence. You know what happens after? After, they will begin an unhealthy competition amongst the boys. They will compete as if she's, she's just a, a, some piece of a cake or some piece of a, some cheap prize to be won. The one who's going to eat her first will feel, um, will feel a boy amongst, will feel a man amongst the boys. And it's okay. There's nothing wrong. You know what? This is about power demonstration over another gender. Already the girl is victimized. Is a, is, has been she has been turned a sex play being. Those things we might not pay attention, but they are nurturing this thing. They are growing and becoming something else. Because one thing I have observed, I've observed guys speaking. Because I grew up in a boy environment, so I understand all these things. I see a time that they don't even understand that they are harassing a woman with their talks. They are undressing you. Because it is okay. Nobody said it's not okay. So, when I look all these things, uh, I see that we've got those things that we have normalized in our society that are contributing, that are nurturing this gender-based violence. Today, I'm not here to talk about normalize. I'm talking about the gender-based violence as a subject. Because it's a, it's a big thing. What happened to Mama Wele was, was part of what is happening to many girls. Ne? What happened to me? My story is a story of many young girls and women. It's what every girl goes through. 
every day. It's nothing different. It's not different from other things, but you just have to tackle the, 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 the things that contribute in this gender-based violence, things that uh, have been normalized by the society that we are living, that now we need to find a way to deal with them. Okay, despite that, despite being so rampant, gender base is largely underreported due to the stigma, fear of victimization, lack of support system, and poor judicial system. It, it can affect anyone, regardless of where they come, uh, social, economic, background, race, religion, or gender identity. In as much as girls and women are largely affected, by it and, at, and, and more at risk, boys and men also experience gender-based violence. It is a fact. They go through that. However, due to how they are socialized, the fear of being called a weak man, fear of being laughed at or ignored by policy, they don't report this violence against them. The cycle of abuse is preserved by the lack of justice, lack of economic opportunities, which lead survivors to depend on their abusers. So far, the gender-based violence manifests itself in many uh, different forms, such as homes, churches, and workplaces. We must not forget the, the things that I just mentioned, the, those, the street harassment and all those kind of things. You know, so I what I think when I look uh, at this whole situation, I think we also we need to neutralize gender roles in our homes. When we raise children, we need to empower them equally. If you call a girl child, if you call a boy child a warrior, you must call also the, the girl child a warrior. If you call the other party another thing, call them together. If you empower another one for greater things, empower the other one. Because now you'll expect that there will be a change in your workplace and yet at home there's no change. You cannot do the other thing and expect the same, the, 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 the different result. We expect the, the workplaces to change when it's come to patriarchy and yet our homes are still, are still the same. For instance, in our homes, let me do a typical example that usually happens. If there's a magoti, you call magoti and give birth to a child who's a boy, everybody rejoices. There's jubilation in the family. There's a hair. But when there's a woman, when there's a girl child, it's a shame. It's like a girl child is a secondary person. We need to change in our homes. If we don't deal with this in our homes, <laughs> we'll always have this thing. It will always be like this, even the next generation. Homes are the, are the real place that we need to teach children. So, other things that are, are, I'm thinking as Unimao Eleme, because I'm, I'm talking in my experience, I'm not talking in the books. I think uh, we have been mainly focused on the, on the after effects. We always focus on the abusers, or on, the, on, the, on the people who, who are abused and not prevent the abuse to occur. We always deal with after effects. We, we always deal with the victims. We wait people to be, to be raped. Why do we wait for people to be raped instead of focusing on the, on the, uh, on the preventions of these occurrences? I think what we need to do is to create studies that will speak in our society, society that will speak uh, uh, and respond to our societal problem, because this is a societal problem. This is not a women's job. This is our thing that we need to fight together. This must not be, not be like a, a gender, like there's a clash between the gender. It's like we... There's a fight. We need to solve these things together. So what are the things that I think that will add more value in this fight 
is the, cre is, the, is the creation of the study to deal with the attitude and behavior. If we can change attitude and behavior and how we, we, we perceive things, we can, we, can, we, can, we can be in a better place to change. But if say, you say, uh, like now we don't do it attitude yet, we still have the attitude, we still, we still have the teachings that a woman is useless, we need to unlearn other things and learn new things. We need to deal with preventions, prioritize preventions, attitude and behavior change, behavioral change in society. And neutralization of gender roles. We must not have a girl child only do chores. Even the boy child must do chores. If, like, when you have children, you put girls and the boys, ne? there must not be this job. This one has been done by a boy. This is a boy's work. This is a girl's work. Just make a routine for every child in the house. You know what? When you're doing that, you are preparing the future. In future, in the right place, they won't have this thing, this mentality that they are better, or there are other ones that are less, are less than, are less important than other ones. So all in all, I don't have much to say, but I'm saying what I see in all these things is we need to fight in our homes with this patriarchal thing. I know that other homes they we we have uh, we've got single parents, isn't it? We've got there. There's there's no there's no fathers that are role models, né? but there are still uncles. According to African proverbs, it's take a village to raise a child. We must do away with these things. Like if we see something happening in the next door, now because it's not your child, now you start like ignoring because it's not your child. When it's next door, it's already in your house. It's already in your house. Just because it's not your child, your biological child, or something happening in another person, we need to now take ourselves and put ourselves in, the, in the shoes of others. And bring back Ubuntu. Because we have lost our humanity. We are losing our values. If you can bring Ubuntu, that say Umuntu, 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 and practice it in our daily lives, I think we'll become better people. I thank you. I don't have much. You can ask me anything that you want to ask me. Yes, yes, my leader. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I'm sure you touch on a nerve there. As 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 you were speaking about roles, uh, uh, changing the roles. I know there is there is some um, stereotypical uh, behavior there in our homes where they will say a, a boy can do certain 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 duties in the house you know um because also fearing the prejudice that is there also in terms of saying we do not want the boy to now start to behave like a girl how then do we speak to the parents uh, addressing that matter before now i involve our guests also to to raise their questions um we, we had given you an, an hour for the for the lecture I just want us to look at that in terms of how now do you bring the parents on board to say uh, this is not ever exposing a boy and 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 you know uh, so that his his manhood might also be addressed sort of the way they think psychologically you know they don't want him to start behaving like a woman he, he'll be a CC those name callings you know we we've had them you said you're also all around whether you're at rural there's a certain weight um when they still seeing you doing washing there when you are a cast there's certain names they call you so how do we bring the parents in now and and start to say such behaviors or such name calling also contributes to to, to gbv I think that the attitude and, 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 and behavioral change is what can help parents. Now we are so worried about the Abandu Bazotini syndrome when we are doing things. Abandu Bazotini syndrome, what are they going to do to you? What are they contributing? People will always be people. 
people you will always be talking whether you do what you do what they always have something to say you need to start now and not always worried about other people and especially when you know that you are doing something right but now if we always worried about the people it's what killing us as a nation it's killing us in many factors of life that thing we are living now for trying to create a certain perception that is not even adding a value in your life if if something is a, it's a good thing you must do it whether people will talk or what but there is that will be a good result yes uh, when it comes to gender roles at home like the cleaning and cooking boys must cook that's why now if you don't teach them to cook and clean they'll do it for themselves maybe they go to schools and stay alone they'll, they'll do for themselves because they can't do things on their own and also they must learn that a woman is not a domestic worker is your partner you need to work together there is no better person you are all better you must all be treated the same not like a woman is something to do washing no 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 women also have better things to do for instance this patriarchy thing hey it's it's, it's 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 still a long way i don't want to lie to you because i do attend some meetings in the rural in the traditional you know where i become the, the only woman the only woman imagine this after 26 years of democracy there's still no transformation like for instance i'll do a typical example about something in august like in the first of august, of august this year i attended a meeting in one of the traditional meetings and i was the only woman and i asked like jokingly but sending a message that uh, uh when are we gonna be transformation why can't why i'm still the only woman but they just dropped around and say ah guys like they they create those they, those um they they have those utterances as a joking about as good these are wrong things and you are addressing something serious okay following that we had a meeting after our meeting women who were cooking in the kitchen instead of being there to to discuss the bigger issues that affect them i was the only woman with a lot of men guess what they, those men came and served food after that the people left and then after the meeting these men they all expected me to do the, to serve them food eh? because they are socialized to be served by a man because a woman places in the kitchen but i tried to, to to just deal with them in a nice way you know that oh it's a woman's month the first day of a month and it's my birthday man i'm the only queen in this house can you please serve me you, you are all men you must say i'm the only queen i was just i was just trying to 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 speak to them in a polite way that they must know that not they must not uh it's not right this thing of they always expect a woman to be in the kitchen and i did not serve them because i want them to get used to that to get used to the fact that they need to this is a buffet they must they must get up and serve themselves not a woman to save them while they are continuing discussing important things that affect the the women or the whole society so i'm saying it's uh, i know what you're saying but this thing is um it's still a long way patriarchy patriarchy is is a big contributing factor of gender-based violence yes no it, it, it is true my leader and and um i'd like to invite our guests to to type in um messages i'll also be checking from the facebook and raise a hand if anyone needs to comment or 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 direct a question to and 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 you'll be noted um while we we giving members to to, to just refresh on their questions um there's there's this issue also gender-based violence is um, I'm happy you touched on it first when you went into the topic that it is not only associated with women or this one-sided gender. 
yeah. every time we look at we are directed by the media you know mostly in south africa we 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 pick up things because the media feeds us that thing and we do not go and research or look around and pay attention now one of our members in saljek was on facebook noting some video that uh, an elderly woman was a uh, sort of sexually harassing, not even sort of, it actually was a sexual harassment to an almost 10 year old boy, you know, touching him his private past and, and dancing and, and in, in a very seductive and unwelcoming manner, you know, for an adult to, to, to a young child. And these are the things where in our society we don't speak about. Um, I know young men who come into our organizations, they, they, they become graduates in training. And some of them, they might be good looking young men. And you would find these older seniors, females, uh, sitting on their desks. And, and you know we sort of have ethics on how to engage in an office. And, and that manner will also move towards sexual, sexual uh, harassment. In, in their manner of speaking, in what they ask them to do, in, in how they touch them and seduce them. And because they are seniors, they are female, and these young men think, hey, I, I can't be reporting this. Uh, even men will laugh at me, you know. Uh, is a senior and, 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 and she's beautiful, she's hot. So if now I start saying this, then men will think I'm gay and all that. Now, from a woman's perspective, how, how can we encourage young men and older men? Because I've also read, I don't know of any, that there was a certain man who, who, who was um, sort of, they roofed his drink, they uh, put something, and these ladies, they are normally there that she been, and somehow they went with him somewhere, and they sexually harassed that guy, and, and sexually abused. And he also went to a police station. He was laughed at. This was an incident that happened a few years back. So you have an old man raped. You have young men coming into work and unwelcoming behaviors and unethical behaviors, immoral behaviors. They're exposed to that. You have young boys also, but there are no aunt, maybe next door, or even a teacher. We see a lot of this happening to boys, but no one is standing up. No one is saying that. And most even the men are, you know, in their corner, they say, uh, hey, but hey, 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 this boy was touched by a, a nice woman. Hey, this boy is lucky and all that. Sis uh, Nomawele, empower us, speak to us as men and, and, and also women so that when you also stand up, uh, uh, we understand how to deal with this, <laughs> you know. Yeah, you, you know, the, what you're just raising, I, I already raised something like that. I'm saying the, 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 the major problem is, how, is the socialization, is how you are socialized as men. That's why you don't speak with this thing, you feel like you are weak when you are raising, they, they laugh at you, you don't talk about these things. So I'm happy that there is a platform now that men, because they always complain and when there are issues of females that they are also going through problems, but they don't talk about them. So now that there's a platform for men, there must be all, we must try to mobilize more men to be part of this platform and, and be transparency and talk about these things and make it a norm to talk about these issues. I was just telling my son not long ago that my son, you must cry when you feel hurt. When you feel like there's something uh, that hurts you, you must you must cry. I don't want the stereotype because we need we need like to encourage men to talk in the, in our homes. It must start there, and also the platform, the organization like you, and also it must go to the the schools. Can I tell you something? A story of like um, when I was. 12 years, I was going to a school called Ingongoni Higher Primary School in Lars. Ne? That's not the only one year in that primary school. But there was something amazing happened in that school. There were these two teachers who were twins, Sikalaba, based from Sikalabas. Ne? They are based in Jobek now. 
they, there was no life orientation at that time. But they taught us about life, the life they lose. That was 1997. I was 12 years. They taught us as guys and the, and, 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 and the men. They taught, uh, they taught boys to say, you are gentlemen of tomorrow. A gentleman carries himself like this. You are a lady. You must carry yourself like this. You don't eat while another child is not eating. You know? And, and it, they encourage us in a lot of things about life. To tell you the truth, I am 35 years old now. But in those people, they, were, they contributed a lot to me in choosing a lifestyle because I was taught at that age about lifestyle and how to choose a better lifestyle and how to carry myself and being discouraged to watch other bold and beautiful certain programs that are not good for children and being discouraged to stay in the streets where you, when there's nothing to do, you, you, what you want in the streets, you know. So they did a lot of things that encouraged me. So I started watching uh, Robert Bolt at 18 because I was discouraged. So it is important the, 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 what we influence our kids to, what we expose our kids to. Because now we let the television to raise our children. We, raise, we, let, we let the social media and everything to raise our children. We run away from our principles. We are so busy to even watch them, their growth. We're always too busy. I think, I, I, I believe, if not, ne, I believe that this year, 2020, is supposed to be a wake-up call to many us. Because many people never spend time in their, with their families. Never spend time with their kids, only the, only the aunts. But now they have time to stay with their families. Now they maybe they see they saw where they are looking. Sometimes we take our, our responsibilities as families and, and give to teachers in, in schools and do our own work. A parent or a mother, because they are parents, the parent is the, the primary teachers of a child. Don't let another person to teach for your child. You might the teachers in school they meet you hand in hand, not them that like you 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 delegating your your responsibility to them to do things for you. You need to work hand in hand. You must go develop a relationship with the teachers and say, please tell me something when you see any behavior in my child that you don't know, and even if it's little, so that we deal with the problem while they're still developing and not wait that they still wait for a bigger problem. We need to deal with things as they uh, as they okay. For instance, we need to give responsibility to the children when they leave the house. We need to keep the responsibility of what did you do at school? Uh, when you left the house, what did you do? What happened? Why did they start to preach? So that when they come back, when you come from, when you from work, they must report to you what happened that day. You must have that openness and try so that you see when you see a, a behavior that you don't know in your child, you ask the teacher, is, there every, is, is everything okay in my, ch in my children? For much, you need to watch the, even the report. Don't wait like now. In December, and you start complaining. I'm saying we, sometimes we leave a lot of things, even in gender based. That's why now we're having this situation. Not that they are new, they've been happening. Probably it's because they were never publicized like today. Yeah. Over no. Hey, hey, leader. I know you're, you're touching on this, and, and, and a lot of people now yeah, want your attention here, leader. I'll, I'll start on the floor, then I'll, I'll go to the chat box and, and Facebook. I, I have my leader there uh, on Galaxy. Uh, can I unmute, sir? Uh, my technical director, can you yeah. unmute? Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, I've just unmuted. Recognize leader. Yeah, you know, uh, I think you've touched a lot of things, uh, my sister. And I'm, I'm, I'm very, very happy. But uh, on my side, I remember when we were still young, like we used to do the, the, at school the biblical studies. But those things, they are no longer there. I don't know maybe uh, what happened. they just no longer there. But and it, it's a problem, you know. And then the, the other thing is that uh, boys need to learn how, how to clean, how to to watch dishes, dishes like you said. Because now, remember, these guys, uh, our boys, they, 
they are our guys for tomorrow. They are, they are our future leader. So imagine if you are married and then now you are living with your wife and your kids and then the wife gets sick, then what? You must go out for help somewhere while you could hand to do that. So I think we must groom them while they're still young, you know, so that they, they can be able to, to notice these things when they, when they grow up. Because you find that when you don't, you don't groom them, they, they'll, they'll be groomed outside. And then it's totally unfair. But these things start in the family, like of, of grooming our boys and, and young girls, because it's, it's not only about uh, girls, it's also about uh, young boys as well. We need to start by grooming them while they're still at home. And then even at school, like we, we need to monitor what is it that they're doing, their progress at school. And then even the, the teachers, we must look at their character. Because now you find that here at home, you, you groom the child, but at school, it, come, it becomes a mess. So I think we need to start from home to school, from school to church. I think those, those things that they, they, they'll start to, to make our, our situation to turn around. Well, now, based at what we are facing now, our country is, is, is in much of a problem. And then we, we really need men and women to stand up and groom the upcoming generations so that we cannot be, behave in, or fall into the trap of what is currently happening in the moment. Because now, hey, this trap is, and it's trending, you know. Each and every day, we hear cases and cases. So I think the only thing that can happen is that we, 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 we groom and we support as well. And then we, we do more like uh, meetings for, for men. So that we, like we do those, those gatherings, so that we, we groom them while, while they're still here. But now, uh, at the moment, our country is, is not in a good state. And then... Uh, we need to stop that. Was now especially our women, they live in fear. If someone maybe wants to go to town, they, is in fear of maybe being robbed or masked, mm. like they're doing at the moment. Like uh, I, I don't know what happened to men these days. Uh, not all of them, but most of them. So I think we also need to to do a prayer, pray for our men. Because now, hey, situation is is not good, my leader. Uh, I, I don't know, but my sister. You, we touched a lot of things, and I'm I'm glad, you know, uh, based on the issues that we raised. But uh, I think we need to stand up all together and and give support to one another. It doesn't matter where you are, but just maybe if you have a problem, talk to someone. It it will it will help. So I think, Mr. Busi, so we, we need to to form more more of what you are doing, my brother. And then we we need to engage more, and then we Thank invite. You. And even these days, it's easy. Like social media is there. You just put it on the, on the Facebook or or or, or, or uh, what do you call this? Uh, on the status, and then people will just recognize, and then they they will see what to do. Because I think some they are willing to do, but they don't know the right platforms. Yes. But I think Thank my you. sister, hey, you, you touched a lot yeah. of things. And, uh, we are so yeah. happy to have you. And then, yeah, thank you so much, guys. I'm sorry to catch you, leader. Uh, uh, many guys are waiting here, yeah, but very, yeah, no, very valid, valid points, valid points, uh, reiterating on, on also what my, uh, my sister touched on. Um, we have here on the chat box, we have here in the chat box, uh, Mr. Khoto Mutamai says, is it not social psychology, uh, psychology influences that has tend to degenerate uh, moral of Ubuntu? As you rightly said, there is a grown behavior of it's not my business. You know, certain things that are happening, I know um, um, I was, uh, I grew up in Soweto and some guys will come back from prison and they will start doing certain things, even guys next door. And when you say, hey, as your cousin, then they say, hey, hey, it's not your business. Ubabu so and so is, is a policeman, uh, is an ANC member or EFF member or whatsoever political. Um, fundi, see, I don't go there. So it's not my business. Or si saba. You know, what do you say to Mr. Khotso Mtamai? Yeah, I hear you. But I think if society 
can bring back Ubuntu, ne? and uh, stop this thing of being obsessed with statuses. Like this thing of respecting people based on their status. Mm -hmm. We choose their status and choose the respect we give them. That's what killed us. That's what is killing us, you know. We need to start treating people equally, you know. And not, and, not give, and not choose to give respect based on their offices that they are borrowed, you know. So, uh, I, yes, the, peop, the, the things that get, uh, like, it, it, this thing of Ubuntu, no? yeah. yeah, we're losing it. Uh, because I've seen a little bit of uh, those symptoms here, even at home, where you get in a taxi, you greet a person, and the person keep quiet, no? Those are the symptoms of that we are losing our humanity that we are losing ourselves, and then we, we run to do things that are not ours. Né? When we're losing our humanity, our, our, where we come from as a, as, as a nation or as an African, because Africans, Ubuntu is supposed to be something that we're practicing because we grew up with Ubuntu. You know, today, because of the loss of Ubuntu, somebody else can eat, cannot eat, you know. But let's not run away from this, né? but I could say, uh, what what happens it's what happens around you does influence whatever the, whatever you expose yourself to whatever you hear you let your ear to hear what you feed your mind it does influence you but then you have a choice to not take other things ne? you have a choice to not feed you, yourself with other things you see them doing and say no it's not for me it's okay, let them do it. But yes, it, we get influenced by what is happening around us. This is a problem. But we need now to know those things. We must know them that they do happen. What you feed yourself, what, your surroundings also affect you, influence you, but you need to choose. For instance, I'll do a typical example. I'm a rural woman at heart. I live in the rural. I live in Ekasi. When in Lazi, you know most what happens in Lazi. But as a woman, well, I chose when I, they can tell you when I was there yesterday, by the way. <laughs> yeah. I never copied the other things. I did what I came, what I went there to do. I never wanted, I saw a lot of things that were happening. Then I said, okay, they are not for me. They are good for them. And I used to love the song, right? I'm going to live in my life like it's gold and live in my, I'll influence myself with my own thoughts and take myself in my own world and not, and see people do things. Even this day, I've had friends that are drinking alcohol, but I don't drink alcohol because the choice, life is a choice. You make a choice. There are consequences in every choices we make, but you must not always hide in other things and, and, and having fears. Né? The moment we are getting fears that, okay, oh my kind of here, there's a, 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 I mean, there's a, we poise, uh, so we can't do anything. I would make a typical example in my story. When I was 21 years, né? a little bit, in parliament, the person who wanted to sleep with me used his office status trying to sleep with me. He said, I will call the words, ne? how can you refuse to sleep with the chief as if I'm an ordinary person? Mm. So what I'm trying to say, I, I was young. I was just a 21-year-old woman, but I said, oh, but I had God to tell him, oh, but you know what, being a chief to me means nothing, you are an ordinary human being. So if all people could know that you need to treat people the same, don't be, don't afraid their status that are, they are being borrowed, this education, this whatever, it's good, the education is good, but this must never be abused. Or the, 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 our, 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 our office of powers ne, must never get abused. Ne? and do all the wrong things in our society. If somebody, somebody is doing something wrong, whether it's whether on a society, or on Kulu or Wendan, you must tell them, it is wrong, whether you are big or what, it is wrong. All wrong must be firm. All right must be firm. All no must be firm. All yes must be firm. Even when we are teaching our children, they must know the no, they must know the yes, they must know the, the, the right, they must know the wrong. Do you know if you have taught somebody to know those things, what happens? If they, they make errors in life, if they were taught something and they make errors, 
they are able to, to correct themselves because they realize that, no, 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 I am wrong. They are able to see that now they are wrong. They were never taught like that. Unlike a person who has never taught something, the one that was never taught something doesn't know anything to correct. You never identify even which now I've got a problem. And the first, the first step to solve any problem is to be able to, to, to see what now is wrong. Yeah, but I must change. But if you don't know, how are you going to change? If you don't admit what to wrong, how are you going to change? When you don't even know that you are wrong because you were never taught. So now we have a responsibility to teach our society no, what is a change of behavior, but I'm learning as in this thing that they've learned. Things that were happening in ages. Even maybe if we cannot fight, if, uh, conquer this vehicle now, but the next generation must be able to conquer. Let's lay a foundation for the next generation. Over to you, Sibu. Yes. Um, th thank you, thank you, my leader. Um, and, and thanks to our project director. That was Buddhisi Peng's question. Um, we have Dan Mukone on Facebook. Uh, as you can see, my leader, I'm on, I'm on another profile. I'm, I'm prepared here. <laughs> no shading or storm. I have backups here. Uh, Mr. Dan Mukone says, we, we have now women being proud to call themselves stalker. You know, I'm sure you are aware of this track that is happening. And, and he says, then how, 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 do we, how do we now deal with that? Uh, I'm sure the song, <laughs> Is, is 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 produced and created by men and and was was distributed to the mainstream women welcomed it and we find young and old are dancing for it and some of us said hey this track will be a problem there, there will be something that comes after it so so at now when women themselves call themselves stalker and we've seen even some drama series what do we then deal with it how do we say how do we deal Okay, 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 okay. When I look at, uh, okay, I've, I've had today, though I don't follow other things because I choose what to put in myself. No? I don't even, I'm not able to dance with those stones, by the way. Okay, when I say, can I tell you something? Uh, one thing that I've realized in my own uh, circumstances, no? of which um, patriarchy uh, is very deep, 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 is deeply entrenched in such a way that it is even able to use a hand of a a, a divided women ne? and use women against each other you know so those women ne? men are able because it is a patriarchy and women they don't see anything because they now believe us as in their natural or that now we need to deal with the behavior and the attitude in, in all of us so women, so that they must know this is wrong. Now we're being undermined as this gender. When we allow these things, we are not helping our society. We are adding problems. We are adding what is wrong with the We just have now to deal with attitude and behavior in our society. If we can do with that and then make it, we create just a study. That will speak to gender base, to, to that will speak to behavioral attitude, to, to, be, to, to attitude and behavioral change in society, and, and influence it to go at, at, at a school level, you know, at a primary school level. They must not teach these children these things that I think, I think, I think, I think as a country, né, we need to be more involved in influence what our children are being taught. In, we must influence the curriculum. We have power as people, but it's the problem we don't know the power we possess. If we can talk one, we, in one voice, we can be able to conquer and influence the system. Because the system all is, is the system, the problem is the system. Yeah? It's not, it's, 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 it's um, affecting us in many areas. It's making us slaves. We are slaves. We need liberation in our mind. We are not liberated. That's why we take everything and get excited. We, we, we get excited with this talk of. Hmm, it's true. It's true. Um, hey, hey, thank you, thank you, my leader. You, 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 you are, you are giving us, you are giving us robustly. You know, and this is the attitude we also need. 
so that there is no room to take this lightly, you know. Um, I'd like to to recognize in Bogoto there, my 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 leader, Mamzo, and Kosa Zanandovu. Hi, how are you? Okay, let me just undo my video so you can all see me. How are, how's everybody? Sorry, thank you so much, Sister Noma. Well, I'm just listening and I'm thinking, sure, um, I'm, I'm, I'm amazed um, at the topic, you know, the depth. Uh, of, of it, you know, and, um, you know, relating your experience, personal experiences as well. And just saying the things that are genuinely true, you know, especially about the issue of patriarchy, which is very true. I was just typing just now before um, I got recognized to speak, um, you know, about the issue of patriarchy being um, entrenched firstly in our up childhood bringing. Uh, it starts there in actual fact, uh, where boy children, um, through their, 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 their cultural norms are actually taught that they are stronger, they are masculine, they mustn't be weak, they mustn't let females dominate them. If you have a boy child and a girl child in the house, I'm actually going through that dynamic as well in my own house, where I'm trying to teach my son, you know, to undo that legacy of Atayaki that's transferred from, you know, his father's generation to his grandfather, etc., going backwards in history. So, you know, where you have a situation where a boy child feels that he's superior to the female species, um, uh, I understand the, the fact that, you know, men are more are dominant and they are more their leaders, their heads, etc., as you know, as ordained by God, if, if so to say. But that issue of it starts there with culture in the family, where a boy child is taught that is more superior, his word is final, um, and that he must entrench himself as a man, as a boy child, he must entrench himself. Even at school, they go to the, they go to school with the same attitude where they feel that you know, even girls in in school in class, they can't beat them. Um, you know, they are men, they're supposed to be the leaders, they're supposed to be in control, in charge, even in the playing field, et cetera, et cetera. So you find that, um, you know, you, you, they, 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 from an early age, from an, a, a child, an early development stage, a child is taught to atayaki. It becomes a land, it's like racism is being a land behavior and becomes entrenched, um, you know, in these other nations. Um, I, I, I won't mention which ones. So it's, it's the same thing as patriarchy. It becomes um, entrenched in, 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 um, in upbringing. And then our African culture itself, itself as we're saying, by design is patriarchal uh, and to a certain extent, very abusive and very, um, very domineering in terms of um, uh, um, uh, giving men that, 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 how do I put it? That, that, that ordainment of men being the authority and, be, and, the, and the hate sometimes gets to be a bit entrenched in terms of being too masculine on the extreme side where it end up uh, women becoming over, uh, you know, overburdened by the fact that the culture says at the end of the day, the men's was final. And then I want to say this, that, you know, over time you find that because our grandmothers, our great grandmothers, our grandmothers and our mothers and, you know, generations backwards leading to us, they were, were taught in this way. The system, like what you're saying, it becomes systemized, systematic, it became systemized. And so it becomes difficult now to undo it in our time because it comes back from history where women are taught, you know, at the end of the day, the man is right. You must just do whatever he says. You must submit. You must find where you are wrong as a woman and change yourself, um, you know, in, in order to allow the man to be the one, whether he's right or wrong, but to be the one where the final say. So it becomes very abusive in that, in the, in, in that, in that, in that sense. Um, and so what happens then is that if as a man, you have not been liberated or been healed, from that, uh, from that patriarchal stigma, if I can call it that, to then automatically or psychologically transfer that same thing to your own sons, to your own children. And um, you, know, you, you then take that behavior to your workplace, to your social spaces, wherever you are, because it's something that has become ingrown or inborn in, 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 in our families, in our culture, et cetera. And so it becomes systematic and then it becomes entrapped in society. So to undo the whole thing, to me, it goes back to undoing the root. I always say, you don't deal with the symptom, but deal with the root cause. So it's, it's to me, it's a method of, let's, sorry, let me just take off this mask. I had it the whole day out somewhere. Yes, it's I'm a actually of, cutting you off now, Lisa. <laughs> I won't be long. To me, it's about yes. how to then undo that root um, in our own family structures. Because remember, society begins from family, and then it comes to community, and then, you know, society, etc. So how do you undo it from a, from the, from a family unit? Because that's where it starts. 
And then because when you undo it there, it then obviously you're undoing it even in the culture itself, our own African culture, so to say. And then obviously when you undo it in that in that level, and then you begin to undo it in communities, being to in society, etc. So the biggest uh, challenge now that's placed on us as the modern parents now in this in this era we are in, as this generation is, inherited this from our grandparents, our parents, etc. How do you undo this 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 cultural stigma? Uh, that has become entrenched because I believe at the root cause of this is basically the issue of I'm not excusing women that they're, they're perfect, that they're great. Of course, we have women who have bad behaviors, etc. And so sometimes we, you know, we get, I can say, they say they get what's coming to them. I don't necessarily like, like the statement, but it's I understand that, that, that element. But I'm doing the whole thing itself because remember, men are leaders. So men have to play the responsibility then of undoing it culturally and doing it in their families. And then we begin to undo the, you know, undo the legacy of, of, of patriarchy going forward. So at, at this point, I just want to put it in that way. Um, you know, I'll contribute probably a little bit later, but that's what I'm taking from this. Um, you know, while you're still, you know, uh, at the beginning of this uh, this engagement, is 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 exactly that toxic masculinity that we need to, um, you know, undo. How do we undo that toxic masculinity that's been taught to our sons? That's been, you know, it's there in our husbands, it's there in our colleagues that work with male. It's there in our workplaces. It's now we translated from generation to generation. Now it's finding ourselves with our sons who take it to the extreme and now begin to entrench it because they can't handle women who are now becoming liberated, independent, um, you know, standing their ground, living their lives. Mm -hmm. And because they're, you know, they haven't been delivered or healed or helped from this toxic masculinity, they can't handle now this imbalance of women coming up and playing the same level field because to them, they always see themselves as higher than the women. My, my so leader, my leader. Thank you. Yes, th thank you, leader. Uh, yeah, no, with your permission, so that I am not patriarchal, ne? <laughs> ever in touch. <laughs> no, I didn't mean to offend you. No, I didn't mean to offend you. Uh, yeah, I, I, I know you, in Bogoto, but nicely put, nicely put. Um, uh, I see a lot of people like getting warmed up and they are typing here, our Facebook is busy. I want to just go back a, a little bit uh, to, to Mr. Sekhali, Israel Sekhali, just to, 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 to summarize his, 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 his point or even a question to say, um, we need to stop pointing fingers or this competition between the two genders. And, and he also illustrates that he, he has seen certain encouragement to say, um, look after the girl child, you know, walk the girl child to school. And he's concerned that by pushing more for one gender, you then leave the, the boy child behind. So he's saying in his point, uh, um, we, we need to get to a point where we see violence as violence, abuse as abuse. And, 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 and we start now stopping the, the, this relativity or, or this competition between two genders. Um, oh, 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 do you do you wanna say anything on that, uh, Matongo? Yeah, uh, yeah, I see. I see. It's an important point. That's why I raised earlier on that we need to neutralize gender roles and empower children equally. We won't be. We won't have the, the issue of competition if we treat everyone from our homes first. When we go in the society, we'll be. We'll not have a problems. We'll we'll just go to a society very groomed and very okay. You know. But now I think it was motivated by the supremacy that men have been practiced for over the years. So that's why they, they develop women stand up and, and, and try to, 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 to fight for their battles while men are, are, are sitting back and watching when things are falling. But I'm happy now that we have this platform. Yes, yes. It's cold. <laughs> So, sorry, my leader. Can we mute uh, awesome there? Thank you. Yes. So I'm saying I'm happy now that, to be honest, I thought before, like before, I was so happy when I saw like an invite, né? and I saw that there's an organization of of this of of this nature, because yes. over the years it came an idea to create an, a boys organization. I don't know, maybe it was motivated by the fact that I've got boy children in as much that i went through abuse i now look at the bigger picture i'm not looking at the way that i'm not angry but i see that there is a problem and what really causing this problem is this i see that the problem is deeper than what i saw for instance you saw me uh, talking about um 
that thing that the new chick in the when there's a new chick in the class you know yeah yes, yes. I grew up in an environment of boys so i am able to pick up a lot of things easily because i relate easily with anyone with boys and girls né? from growing up by the way i played soccer too okay so now uh, like after some years after my incident happened there was somebody who came and confessed to me what transpired you know what led me to be targeted it was the same thing the same boyish tendencies it's happened now in an adult environment so which means this thing is happening because it has been nurtured over the years you cannot stop something that you were groomed you continue doing it because you don't know if it is wrong it was the same thing they they saw a girl and went to the peers and then somebody they use this the, the this what i just said you know so i'm just saying everything you know it's it's a, we need to start our homes that our homes is a basic unit there's a reason that it was become a basic unit it means everything must begin there teaching leadership must begin in our homes if they lose principles must begin in our homes everything our children they must first hear anything that they will meet outside from our homes because if we don't talk about these things they will get influence from outside yes yes Linda. i i think you you also wrap up um the point and the question uh you know on that patriarchy issue starting at home and you also typed it nicely to say it's it's nature at an early age and then it's entrenched from that age to adulthood from homes to the public domain and that being the community the workplace and even the high structures as parliament and that's shocking uh, and it also speaks volumes to 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 what do had transpired in parliament when we saw our leaders accusing each other of 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 this gpb incidents you know being taking place in their homes and then we are also concerned as men women and citizens of south africa how are, are we going to now even handle this you know as as the whole nation when even our leaders seem to be ignoring that this thing is happening at home you know we're trying to stamp it out and we are going and pointing it outside there so i'm very happy when you touch on the on the home uh, based uh, education and you say let's deal with it at home first then it will move to the community and it will then uh, be an ethical and moral behavior for the whole society um we 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 also had we also had a comment here uh, from siponjai on facebook he says good presentation uh, sister nomawele what is your take on women who provoke men with insults shouting etc because i think also that causes a uh, gpv <laughs> um, okay fortunately i had a discussion about that yesterday with another man uh, he was saying the same thing and i asked him, what is the root cause what do you think is the root i asked him by the way what, what is the root cause okay apparently he's he's been cheating over the years for this woman now this woman he, is been tolerating now is this woman now can there's no trust at all now when they speak is it shout she shouts né? you know sometimes there is a root in every behavior for instance i'll do it there's a there's a book i read in 2008 after i was going when i was going through with my own trials there's a woman who bought me that book when when she was from overseas it was written by joyce meyer Joyce Meyer, it says, uh, it's, what, uh, ash, the beauty of ashes, I think. Uh, she was raped repeatedly by his father. And then she ended up having some bad behavior in her because at the age of 22, I think, she was, she was already in this, I think, in a second and a third marriage. You know? Yeah. So there's a quote that I like that I saw in that book you know, because he tried to deal with the inner, inner wounds. There's nothing as painful as an inner wounds. It's even the physical one. The inner one is more painful. If somebody keeps on doing something, you it changes you. 
you must see the symptoms of abuse when somebody is speaking and then the moment you realize that this thing is affecting you emotionally you must be able to spot because you 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 develop emotional wounds and then what is going to happen you'll have a bad behavior no? for instance it, it is a quote that he, she used there she said something very profound and so a bad behavior is like a bad fruit of a bad tree from a bad root if the root is broken of course the fruit will be bad for instance take that if the, if the childhood is broken what is going to happen in the adulthood it's going to be damaged you know so you need to yeah. deal with the root mm. in order to overcome anything mm. Mm. yes yes no definitely definitely my leader you we we, we have people as we have people as far as blue funding here um there's a uh, my leader here is very very uh, impressed his name is lituka manihiling uh he says i'm watching from broom funding ppf gbvf free state provincial ambassador i'm impressing also men are involved on issues of gbv um we we have siponchai also says i believe we can fight gbv when men and women come together to discuss these issues as a team not opposition and listen to both sides of the story we we, we also uh, ladies and gentlemen on the floor you are also welcome also to chip in ask any question or comment i'll be giving you a minute and a half we also have Bosnati nombandana the boy child must be mentored by being exposed to good men even if it's an uncle who runs his family well they should be they should be taught leadership skills on how to be better men uh, in future and i believe exposure is more effective so i think they reiterate on, on the discussion and the engagements that we've been having and 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 more people are are more impressed to say um where when you're tackling this 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 engagement this topic and this issue you are covering the whole aspect of the society you know you're not being one sided uh, in 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 much instances men tend to switch off when they see that we are the only accused we are the only accused and we are not being invited to also share the experience and also learn you know from the engagement so they tend to not switch off and like i'm i'm not going to participate in this and even when their wives call them into a certain engagement or a certain function they'll also be tackling this and they'll be fundraising for for gpv a uh, uh, victim then they'll say hey this will be a persecution of men and and the way you've tackled it a lot of men are are very impressed and they are thanking you and they say the esteemed guest has covered it and for both sides and i like that you you also went on that on that point where because most men also always ask to say uh, but women trigger us you know there was once a video posted within our members day in a whatsapp group where a lady kept on slapping this guy and eventually the guy just pushed the, the lady into the river and and most of us were were saying hey don't don't fall into the trap of saying this one or that one condemn what is wrong condemn what is wrong behavior condemn what is violence condemn what is crime now if one will say but the the lady does not have much strength to to you know to to retaliate but she did begin the attack and guys were saying yeah this is why there's abuse you know i think this is this is the thing that guys want to talk about they always ask me this question but they are provoking us and ekas you see i'm fit labantu baya sugel and uti nyahlanya kini i won't take it to me that thing nyahlanya and someone who slept me uh, my brother at school also at one point slept slept a, a, a young girl and he, he said to me uh, she she was naming things i was fine until she grabbed me by my private parts and that was just me no no so uh, uh, just to just to stamp on that one to say now 
Well, how do we tackle that one? Because men want to justify to say bias again, and we as adults are saying to say, "Hey, guy, a wrong thing is a wrong thing." Whether someone came to your house with whatever, at the end of the day, do you want to be a murderer? Do you want to be a abuser? Over to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think no. If we can stop generalizing the societal problem and deal with the wrong thing, whether it is done by which gender, and just treat it like that, it is wrong, whether it is done by a female or what, and not generalize the situation. So gender nullification is the answer of our problem. If we can just nullify those gender roles and not generalize the problems and just deal with the problem as it is, whether it is done by women or uh, a man, and not say, oh, this woman, let's say that person has done something, you know, and not group everyone. You must just fix problem. Now, other people, they are, they, 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 they are hiding in dealing with situation because now we group in situation when we are dealing with situation instead of dealing with that person. If Mama Ola did something, you must deal with Mama Ola and so that Mama Ola must stop and not say all women are like Mama Ola, they are like this, you know. Yes, uh, to tell you the truth, Women, they also play a, a, a contributing, they contribute in the gender base. Not always the case, ne? but some women, they do. I won't lie to you. Even other women, for instance, I will, I will, I'll just take something. Ne? When I was going through my own abuse, women were, were mobilizing each other against me as, the, as their fellow sister to stand against me, you know, because I said no. I said no to somebody. Mm. But I think that it did not move me. I heard that what they were doing. And I don't know the guts I, I heard because I went to some of the women and said, well, today I'm investigating those women who were mobilizing against me. I wanted to show them that I know. Then he said, oh, oh, this is, I came, oh, what are you busy doing, my, my darling? They just said like that. He said, hey, today I'm busy investigating those women who are busy mobilizing against me. I just wanted to send a message you know, that I know what they were trying to do, but they are pretending in my face. You know? Women do play a role in destroying other women. Patriarchy is so powerful because it's used the other, the hands of another woman. Even, yes, men go through abuse. They are being beaten by wives. Uh, there, are, there are women who are violent. We must never justify a wrong thing. Whether it is done by a female, it must be wrong. It must be treated like that. If I think the day we stop pointing fingers in genders and just deal with the situation, we will conquer this battle. We will tackle these things. True, very, very true. Um, Mr. Khaleh is back here and, and he's, 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 he's reiterating or following up from, from this pointing fingers and he says, uh, toxic feminism is one subject that is left unattended. One day we have to tackle it. I'm saying this because I know men are suffering uh, so much every day. They think there's no help for them. You know, and we, we are one where we say men should join subject. Men come here, let's talk about these issues. Let's, we also partner with other stakeholders who, who are subject to uh, meta experts and we try to, to, to find an acceptable uh, solution for, for, for each uh, problem that uh, men uh, uh, come with in the organization. But out there, what are we saying? How are we, are we telling the young boys and men um, and, and about this toxic feminism? Are we even uh, acknowledging it that is there? I, I think you touched on it as you were wrapping up now. Uh, uh, that there is. So, Mr. Sarah said, this thing is growing. And while we be with the other issues and looking at one direction, we, we might have a problem. I, I, I will come back to it because I think you, you have dealt with the position. You, you have point to let us deal with the wrong behavior. Let us bring us to the other and say toxic masculinity, toxic feminism. But uh, I'm sure what Mr. Kale wants to know is that do we acknowledge that it's growing in today? And are we also when we're having such engagements to say, hey, ladies, 
that behavior also is prejudice, is oppressing, is abusing, and it's a threat now. Yeah, I think in our activism, we need to not be selective in dealing with issues. We need to deal with issues as they are and not camouflage issues, you know. Uh, we must not be noisy when a woman is going through a situation, when the man is going through a situation and we are quiet. That is a, 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 a selective activism, according to me, you yeah? know. We just have to deal with everything that is wrong in our society, whether it's done by a feminist or by, by people with masculinity, you know. We just have to deal with our societal problem together. I'm that person who feel like God created men and women to deal with situations. So the solution of societal solution will come from those people together. Mm, mm, if, mm. And if we think like if 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 you if, if if you if you disagree with me, I will ask a question. Eh? If women were really able to solve problem on their own, do you think we will still have problem today? That's why I'm even saying that it is a never-ending struggle, you know? Because we were having the same problem that, was, that our, for, for our, our, our grandmothers had, or even our grandparents, but it was diff diff different at that time when it comes to men, you know? But now, situations are coming to light that also men do go to gender-based violence, né? they suffer. Even though a number of people who are always at a disadvantage, it's always what women. Probably it is because women talk, we don't know the number of boys because we have never done a survey to check. We don't know their cases. We don't know the truth because nobody knows. You understand? Yeah. We can't really show which now who are the real ones. Because we women you report, they die silently. So we don't know the statistics where we can have a, a, a true evidence, you know? but now we are able to judge because of what is what is reported on the female side. You know? Now I think as this organization, you know, as this platform that I like the most, yeah, that is, yeah. that, you know, to be honest, I'm scared to speak, you know? but I feel free a little bit. <laughs> no, so what? <laughs> so what I'm saying, uh, yeah, I've got children that are boys, that's why I, I can't just take side. I, I'm, I'm unable. Yeah. I want to deal with the situation. I want to, when I'm raising them, I always say, I'm raising the, the gentleman of tomorrow. I'm raising a husband or somebody. I'm raising a leader. I'm raising a father to the, to the, to the children. So when, when we raise people, we should have to think about future, not about today, you know? So I'm saying, uh, all in all, Toxicity do happen in both sides. However, the one, the masculinity, the toxic masculinity is the one that's dominating because it is reported the most and we see it every day. Men, you must encourage now, you must do a campaign to, to, to make sure men become free, become able to talk, create your support group. Don't, don't think that women will, create, will think for you. Men must stand up and talk and take and take responsibility of their challenges. We can't solve their challenges on our own. They must solve their challenges. So at least you are here. Encourage them now to talk. Encourage them to talk now about issues. Really. Without bias. As Kulume before it, as Kulume in my dog. As I think I think it's a right to just create a slug or a slogan that as a cool name, buffet. So I think it, is. <laughs> it, just, it just came to my mind that absolutely. no, we'll do. We, we, are, we are already adopting you, leader. We have friends of Saljek. Uh, many people are here campaigning saying, hey, they are lobbying your name. You must join friends of Saljek. So I have no doubt by tonight when I sleep, you'll be friends of Saljek. <laughs> I'm a friend. <laughs> yes. we, we have pretty here um, on the chat box um, she says it is good that you are not referring to GPV as a problem for women only uh, because I recently saw a post on Facebook which a woman were influencing each other to also kill men because they are killing them 
And if we view this GPV like that, that means we will never end it. Paying back won't make anything better. What is more sad is that the post I'm talking about was on social media, the same social media parents allow it to teach their children. Our society is a mess, really. Um, I think here it's a, it's a, it's a comment to say uh, our social media also is, is, is becoming a, a problem where most people are paying attention to it. I know a friend of mine who's a journalist, and he said, you know, there's no news anymore. People just go and say, Twitter, what is happening? What is trending? And they take that caption and they make it the news. Nobody researches and, and goes to the ground anymore. So, and she condemns here this, this paying back and it it's also speaks to opposition. Um, Mr. Papiki says men and women, they can't stop uh, GBV are fully, men and women, they can stop GBV are fully responsible. Uh, GBV. Uh, not sure if I get it properly, Mr. Papiki, but you say men and women, they can stop it and are fully responsible for GBV. I think uh, that is partly so, yes. Uh, Mengo Sazana, I'm just going through quickly. Is anyone who wants to raise a question, a comment? You are welcome, so. Says, how do we deal with the imbalance of uh, empowered women? leaving men feeling weaker and not emasculated. I do acknowledge that GBV is both sides. How do we nip this in the bud? Uh, do we have anything on Facebook? Uh, Facebook, it's Boris Malaj. It says our guests must join uh, Friends of Subject and continue more there. This challenge needs all of us united. Um, I think you definitely touched that. Uh, hey, I'm shocked here. Declaration of conflict of interest. My wife is typing somewhere. <laughs> She's saying, uh, it is important that we stand against what is wrong, regardless of gender of the perpetrator. That is powerful. Respect on both sides is important, but even more important is what we say is acceptable in our relationship and our homes as men and women. As a man walk away from a situation that threatens to, be, to bring it in the West in you. The same way we encourage our sisters to walk away from relationships that don't deserve them, uh, that don't serve even them better. And um, so it also speaks to men, you know, when they are in a toxic relationship, when it's also turning you into something you are not, and you are not because we are in relationships to get love, to be nurtured, to grow, um, to be more of, 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 of in a positive space, you know, and, and, and multiply in the goodness that we have. So here it speaks to say, if you are in a relationship and it's toxic, it's toxic, my men, um, find the solution or find the door because you might end up now being the perpetrator and, and this also speaks when we, we, we talk mostly about self-control. There is also a limit to a human being. Know when to move away from a fight before it gets ugly. Um, I have my Dr. Awesome here on the chat group also says, FOS needs you. As we build the capacity, welcome, Sisi. <laughs> Uh, so yes, yes, um, my leader, it's almost, yeah, we're shutting down at six. I'm, I'm welcoming any, any other comment, um, any, any question. I think you, you, you have, uh, you have served a lot of people, the good bread, you know, you have given them the water for their test, but I, I'm still afraid that my men are not speaking here. We normally get these questions and you can see that men certain somehow don't even really get if they are part of the patriarchy organization, you know, the side. And they would ask in secret, hey, but men, do, do, do you say now if my wife is sick, I must take over uh, the, 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 the dinner, the kitchen. Uh, and I, you guys, I normally see you young men, especially old men who say to me, you young men are telling me I'm changing nappies. Hey, hey, what is that? What is happening? 
So this is what it speaks to. A, a lot of men might not even understand. And they might see us as the younger fathers saying, hey, uh, to say it. Uh, I'm sure you'll understand, but you'll see you. <laughs> you know, uh, but, 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 and we, we understand the 21st century. My, my wife is also a leader, is also at work. I'm a leader, I'm also at work. We both have children, we come back to, to at home. If I came back early and she's still in the meeting, um, I have the skills. These are my children, this is my house, I can cook. And if my uncle comes in, says, yo, 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 mshan, so I think someone was saying, is our culture socializing? And if it's in fact like that, do we really then need to, to change certain things in our culture? Because we now as the young men, we also face that and we're like, hey, I'm not gonna go home. When I start doing this, this, and they have these comments and that relationship is now toxic for me. Because you're trying to teach them what is today and how are we transforming and what is changed. So this speaks to our culture, my leader, Mam uh, 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 And and I don't want. Uh, I, I'm also a, a, a person who's raised traditionally. I subscribe to my tradition, but I acknowledge what needs to change. So this is not to 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 speak badly about cultures. We want to talk more on, do we need to change this certain aspect? They say, must clean all the, 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 the dishes, the rooms of this house, uh, everybody's washing, while everybody's just relaxing and some people are not working. And those little things, what are we saying? Okay, uh, there's a lot of toxicity that is hidden under the that is masquerading as culture, and yet it's not culture, it's just a toxicity. So other things are just a wrong practice, wrong things are toxicity. You don't expect another human being to do what you cannot do, to do something that you cannot, like, to be, uh, you must treat people the way you want to be treated. Ne? Don't expect another person to do things. For instance, I'll do a typical example. My brother got Makoti Upper Ekaya. Magafika, we chose to give her a beautiful name, not those ugly names. Ne? We gave her Kanya because it brings light. Ne? So, in the first few, because we, we, we had two names with crazy, because we wanted something to bring light. Like we are, we are creating because we understand the words. You understand? So, okay, the first few days I saw like the Koti coming in my bedroom. Ne? coming to say, bring things to me, said, no, God, you don't have to do this. You do what we do, you know? You, you, if, we, if we wake up, we don't wake up so early. Don't wake up very early. We, you, you know, I mean, like, we don't want to treat another child's, another, because we don't want to deny it. You know, we are fun and that's not as a lie. She's become part of us. She must do things like the way we do. She must not be treated as inferior or as a maid. You know, if you are sleeping, she must sleep there. We, we, you know, we, she must not be a donkey. You know, when I decide not to go out of this room, she must not come to me in the room and bring me things, you know. Because she's a human being. We must treat people the way we want to be treated and not hide wrong things under the, the culture. Yes, there are things now that have been practiced um, over centuries and now they are treated as culture yet they were not culture yes mm. they've been normalized they need to be challenged i love culture i don't can i i love culture I, i'm a very okay when i'm in town I, i'm able to to adapt when i'm home i know culture i go to i meet traditional leaders i've got a lot i relate i've got good relations with them but you know, when something is wrong it is wrong whether it's done under the name, under the disguise of a culture. It is wrong whether it's done in the, under the disguise of a religion. We just have to now, we need to set a tone. But now we want to be treated like this in society. We must do away with things that are not adding value in our society, that are, are, are adding, are contributing to toxicity in our society. Oh, yes, my leader. In the last uh, few minutes, I just want to wrap it up with uh, three three questions. 
Um, I have Mr. Papiki Israel, and I'll take Manko Sazana last. Um, let me just start with a few comments, just two comments on the checkbox, and I'll give each speaker just two minutes so that we don't exhaust our time. Uh, um, Mr. Charlie Monson. Oh, Mr. Charlie, welcome, welcome. Great honor, sir. You are with us here. Uh, Mr. Charlie Monson is a very keen guest also. Um, he's a connector, a networker. Um, he, he, has, he, has, he has a noted here. Uh, just apologies. As I'm scrolling, it just went too fast. <laughs> As I'm scrolling, it just went. He says the culture and the moral uh, values of quality um, respect, acceptance of difference of opinion, mutual understanding should be taught at home. The culture and moral values of equality, respect, and acceptance of difference of opinion and mutual understanding should be taught at home. That, that also speaks to what you touch on very much. Um, 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 agreed, uh, Mr. Charlie. Um, um, Dr. Osam says, not even a maid must be treated with uh, with unfair. Well, not even a maid must be treated with unfairness and disrespect. I, I, I'm assuming. Not even a maid must be treated badly. Must be treated with fairness and respect. Okay. So not even a maid. We are speaking to everyone here. We are speaking about everybody here. Um, I will take Mr. Sekhale. Can I take you for your question in two minutes? And thank you very much, sir. Um, leadership. Uh, this is a very awesome um, uh, platform. Thank you so much. Um, I just want to make a, a comment, not a question, actually, to say I was engaging with a friend of mine on these kind of issues just um, during the, the past week. And he, he reminded me something to say not everything in culture should be changed and it's not like culture got a new meaning of abuse now there is culture there is abuse i like when my sister is saying we should be able to differentiate between the two because um there are instances where women also are given privileges in culture and uh, like when we in some cultures the vendor culture the very culture when we're going to negotiate uh, for marriage women actually take the lead so it's not everything in uh, that have to do with culture that have to be challenged and questioned. And I think we at some point lose focus when trying to fight now every aspect of culture and we end up losing uh, focus on what is really toxic because we, we have to differentiate between the two. And the last thing I want to mention is when we had a, a lecture with, um, ah, just forgot the name, but then she, she said something to say, same thing as for instance, cooking, a, a woman cooking for, 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 for his, um, um, for her husband. At some point, it's an act of love, but not really saying it's a woman's job to cook for a man. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lida. That was short and sweet and, and very, very correct. Very correct. Uh, I think we, we're all on the same page. The chat box has been beaming with that to say it, it is not necessarily culture. Um, it, some in some views is master's culture, but it is not. We must expose it. Um, Mr. Papiti, Mr. Papiti, I'm taking you, sir, Rasignalo. Can you unmute your question or comment? Two minutes. You, you haven't muted, my leader. I see you're talking, but you're not muted. You're not unmuted. <laughs> oh, oh. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Nomawela, welcome to Saljek. Thank you, the leadership. Uh, I'm listening very carefully. And uh, I'm still believing GBV explain itself. And we know why both men and women, why we end up doing the GBV. The question is only one thing, or maybe the answers are only ones. We do things that we know our partners don't want both men and women. We know that exactly what we do. Simply things. I know my partner doesn't want me to come late at home. And when I come late, it's gonna be an argument. On that argument is how you respond. We don't have to let it go out of order. So we simply know exactly 
or how to stop this JBV. It's in our hands to stop it. No one can stop it without us, both partners. Because without men and women start saying, I cannot do this to my men, I cannot do this to my woman. There's no way this thing will stop. We have to stand up. It remains in our hands. And it has to be clear on that. And when it comes to the customs, we need to face a reality. We need to be honest. We need to give and we need to do the right thing. We don't have to use our culture other way around, like as if we're going to abuse other people. I cook in my house, I clean in my house, I do everything. I don't have a problem because before I can stay with my wife, I was staying alone. I was doing everything myself. So why? Because she's in the house, she has to do everything. No. It's our duty, both of us living together in the same house. Let us fully accept our responsibility and do what you're supposed to do. The GBV, I still believe, we can end it, both partners. Because it starts with both partners. It cannot be one person that can start it. Both partners, we have a full responsibility. I thank you, Malia. Thank you, thank you, Dida. That was on time, on point. Um, my leader, uh, there's a feedback. Uh, Mango Savana, Okay, thank you so much, um, leadership. Um, in uh, in conclusion, um, from what I was saying earlier on today, um, this thing is definitely uh, it's a family. It starts the family unit, and then as we spoke earlier, it progresses to um, uh, community, etc. But I think what we agreed today, which is which is quite important in the sense that both parties have a role to play. Uh, it's not just um, toxic masculinity; it's also toxic feminine feminism if you can put it that way. So we both have a responsibility to equally uh, nip it in the bud. I want to add something I added in the comments earlier, which I believe is quite crucial um, going, going backwards. And I think it plays in both genders, whether male or female. But in this case, I just want to say, sometimes you find that even us uh, uh, as women, uh, mothers uh, per se, we perpetrate uh, the acceptance of, uh, of abuse to our daughters because we were taught that um, men are the ultimate say that you do whatever they say, whether they're right or they're wrong, or they are ill-treating you, or they're treating you unfairly or in a bad way or whatever. But that thing that, you know, you must accept, you must make a zelam danami, um, you must, in the marriage, you must make a zelam, et cetera. You must, you know, stomach whatever comes your way, even if it's, an, it's, a, it's abuse, uh, but maybe not um, seen in that way. And so we teach women to accept it. And then girls, start to entrench themselves even in relationships with these toxic, uh, in these toxic relationships, where even when the signs are there that there's danger, they don't quickly leave, they stay, where they get them, as we have seen the states in our own country in the past couple of years, where lots of girls have gotten themselves killed by being involved in these bad relationships. And obviously same as in marriage as well, where women stay or overstay in toxic marriages. Uh, and then they, you know, they transfer that thing to their girls that it's okay for them too to remain in that situation, even if they're not married, when they get into a relationship as well. Uh, and then later on in life, when they marry, they start, also get stuck and you know um, stay in an abusive situation where whatever the man does, whether it's right or wrong, it's acceptable because he's the man and he goes like that. So I think we need to, you know, we need to end that. We need to stop that in order for us to cut this thing in our families, cut it in our culture. And same goes with uh, on the opposite side as well as men. So I, like I was saying earlier on, it come, it goes back to the family unit because remember it's family unit, it's then community, society, and, and then globally. So in order for us to actually really deal with this, go back to the family and then correct it, you know, in in, in, in systematically in that way, and then the culture. So I like I like I like uh, the talk the talks that came in today, and I do acknowledge that of course it's both sides. You know, we cannot cry for women and not cry for the other side as well. Um, you know, uh, but at the same time, boys emulate what they see their fathers do at home, the same way that girls do the same. So how we model even, you know, um, uh, uh, how we model what being a good father or being a good husband is to a, a, a child uh, is exactly how they will also become when they are, uh, you know, of, of age. And when they grow up to get into relationships, when they're ready to get into relationship, they will you know, perpetuate those behaviors. So it goes back to family. So we, as we are all here in this group now, we, as we belong to families, we have a responsibility to play, you know, in, in, in terms of, uh, finding a way to end, um, you know, this, 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 um, to end this cycle of GBV, and then, uh, oh, eventually over time.
to begin to end it in our country. So it's in our families, in schools, in, in our communities, etc. But yeah, that's my part I wanted to add. Thank you very much for your for your great topic, uh, Noma Wele. And thank you also to everybody who contributed both here in the in the group in the chats as well as in the in the Facebook chats. Thank you so much. Yeah, I want to add something to what you just said. Um, after 15 years of motherhood experience, né? by the way, my child, my son is 15 years. Né? I just learned something that children learn more through ex by observation, more than what you tell them. So even when we teach them in our homes, we must mind our behavior, we must mind how we are as parents. You can't teach them and say you want them to do this and yet you do the other, the opposite. They won't be good in that. They will excel in what you do as a parent. Né? So, in, in, in trying to fight this gender-based violence, we must check our behaviors too. How do we handle ourselves in our families? If you fight in front of the children, né? I was talking about this yesterday with somebody engaging, that you don't fight in front of children because now they will grow up with that behavior and then it's okay daddy and mommy was doing that in front of us i said you know we need to find a, an amicable ways of solving things it, not and, and not influence uh the children negatively i just want to take this moment to say thank you for giving me this um this engaging platform i'm anyway i'm going to be part of the friends so it's home <laughs> Mr. Stevo, we can't hear you, sir. What was Maybe he lost network. Yeah, I think. Uh, I think he probably lost network. He is network. Oh, he's back. Okay. Okay, he's back. We still can't hear you, sir. Just check your microphone, uh, Cliff. Your microphone connection. <laughs> okay. Well, let me let me let me rather take the opportunity to do the closure for that day as Tebe on his absence. Thank you very much, Nomawele, for the great uh, talk and uh, the inspiring words that you've uh, given us. We're so ever blessed and glad that uh, you even took up to be part of uh, Saljek as friends of Saljek, and we're looking forward to that. Thank you greatly, and thank you for the comments that has come through from uh, the uh, Zoom chat, as well as from Facebook and uh, commentaries that were made by respective uh, participants in this plenary. Thank you ever so much, and God bless. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sissy. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Mama. Bye bye. See you, Togos. Thank you. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye bye. A very lovely one, my sister. Thank you so much. We we'll see Sis Noma Wele on the Friends of Saljek. So we meet on the other side. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you.